So once again, good evening, and thank you again for being with us for the final session of the second round of the Presidential Debate 2003, given to you, as always, live from the ECOWAS Secretariat in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. My name is John Momo, and with me on this fifth session are Remy Oyo, President of the Nigerian Guild of Editors, and Ray Epu, who is the President of the Newspapers Proprietors of Nigeria. Our timekeeper is Michael Obiakeme of the AIT, Africa Independent Television. Let's now welcome the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. Chief Abbasanjo, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Here are the rules of these debates. As always, we read them out. There shall be a moderator acceptable to all stakeholders. There shall be two panelists. Each session of the debate series shall be for 90 minutes. There shall be a timer for control of timing. The order of speaking, who speaks first and who speaks last, shall be determined by a toss of the coin. In this case, you are the only candidate here, so there's no need for that. Opening statements by you shall be for three minutes. Closing remarks will be for two minutes. And the panelists shall not exceed 45 seconds in asking a question. An answer by the candidates shall be for three minutes only. There shall be no rebuttal in this case. We may have to follow up. Candidates are not allowed to ask questions direct from each other. The moderator may permit more time for a particular subject, but you will have only two minutes to explain and to respond. Only the moderator has this discretionary power. Candidates must focus only on issues and be positive. There shall be no attack, a personal or negative attack on any person or on each other. Language shall be presidential, dignified, and that which enhances the good image of the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Candidates may choose to sit down or stand throughout the duration of the debate. And candidates shall exhibit comradeship, friendship, love, patriotism, and be truly happy to see each other. You should be happy to see us. In three minutes, for your opening remarks, would you tell us why you are seeking re-election for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. On a lighter note, since um, you have these rules for uh, a candidate or two debaters, and I have no uh, body to debate uh, with, I thought that you will have a rule for a single debater. But uh, since you don't have that, I will still abide by your rule for two debaters. Well, why do I want to have a re-election? Well, it's simple. The theme of my world conference is continuity for stability and change for progress. Anybody knows that continuity has an element of stability, an element of security with it. But also, in my part of the world, people will say, well, we pray that the way you spend this year will be better than the way you spend uh, last year. And that is the change. <clears throat> you want to learn from what you have done probably inadequately in the last year and improve on it so that you will do it better this year. And that is the change that we talk about in our own uh, theme, that we will 
want continuity so that things that we have begun will continue to build on it. But we will also want change, change where we have learned lessons that we will want to do things uh, slightly differently. We have established certain uh, uh, reference points, certain landmarks, certain foundation. Take, for instance, in the area of economy. In the last three years, uh, our economy, GDP, has grown by 3.8, 3, uh, 4.2, and 3.5 in the average. In the 20 years before that, it has been 2.6. So we have something which we have given, and we want to give better, more and better Thank you. of the same thing. Four years ago, when you were sworn into office, one of your um, priority areas was redressing corruption. And Sorry, I, I can't hear you, and uh, you don't mind if I ask when I don't hear you. Four, four years ago, when you were sworn into office, yes, one of your priority areas was redressing corruption in the society. Four years after, what do you think you've done? Can you walk tall on your achievements? And if re-elected, what do you intend to do as a follow-up? Yes, four years ago, I said to the people of Nigeria, and indeed to the world, that one of the things that I will face squarely is crusade against corruption. And the first, <clears throat> the first draft bill I put before the National Assembly is the draft bill to fight corruption. That bill languished in the National Assembly for over one year, I persisted to see that bill uh, passed. It was passed. I persisted in the implementation of that bill, of that law. And that the fact that that law has been implemented to the extent that those who, in fact, passed that bill less than three years ago have seen that the bill or the law is so good that they have seen it as a threat and they have to try and kill it is, to my mind, the fact that that law, as a beginning, is something for which I can walk tall anywhere in Nigeria and anywhere in the world as a crusader against corruption. You see, <clears throat> I have said that the aim of that bill and the aim of our exercise is the elimination or drastic reduction of corruption. People will ask, how many big men have you put in jail? My aim is not to put big men in jail. My aim is to make big men not to perpetrate corruption. And if, for fear of being dealt with by the law, if that law has not been altered, and I hope that that law will not be altered, if that is there to act as a check, then I believe that the uh, uh, struggle is uh, worthy and the struggle should be uh, maintained. Now, <clears throat> even then, when you talk about how many people have you put in jail or you have uh, dealt with, a situation where judges of the uh, uh, high court are being dealt with in the way they have not been dealt with before, a situation where governors are being queried for their, uh, the way they have uh, uh, acted in office, the way they have not been queried before, the way uh, in the situation where permanent secretaries have been queried and have been 
sent, uh, uh, and been prosecuted the way they have not been done before, then I feel that we should feel satisfied that yes, the, uh, we have made a start. And what we need to do is to sustain, to sustain that start which we have made, not to uh, uh, remove or the pillar or the foundation and say you want to build another foundation because the foundation on which you have um, seem to be uh, loaded against you or against me. I don't believe that is the answer. So I am quite satisfied and I can walk with my, high, my head up anywhere in the world that this administration has started. I won't say we are there yet, but we have started. And all we need to do is to continue to build on where and how we have started. Obasanjo, uh, if by now, and I'm sure you, you must by now have gotten a good grasp of what the problems in the educational sector in Nigeria are after four years, when you're, if you're re-elected, what will be those things that will put in place to make sure that those problems don't rear their heads again or they're solved? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I believe that we should have compulsory universal basic education so that every Nigerian child can have a minimum of nine years of education. With a minimum of nine years of education, he, will be, he or she will be able to manage his own or her own affairs better. That's number one. Number two, after nine years of basic education, he may even be able to go on his own team to improve himself or herself. That's second point. Thirdly, I will ensure and I will want to ensure that the facilities in our educational institutions are adequate, whether they are state, federal, or private educational institutions. Number uh, four, I will pay very serious attention to distance learning because not everybody will be able to have the comfort of a classroom or of a lecture theater to have a uh, university type education or uh, whatever, but they may be yearning and with the uh, uh, IT today, you can have almost as close to uh, education in the, uh, in the lecture theater as you can have looking, working with your uh, laptop. Or, work, uh, or looking uh, at your uh, television or your radio. Now, I will want to improve the quality in our tertiary institutions. Take an institution like the University of Italy. It used to be the pride of this country. We now have a situation where graduates from University of Italy now go abroad and they say they have to take exams to know that their standard is right and their standard is up to the uh, level that they will be accepted in other institutional educational institutions as well. I regard that as demeaning for Nigeria. So I will want to see all those uh, uh, universities, the new, the old, the private, the uh, state, the federal, really being up to the standard that wherever the products of those universities go, anywhere in the world, they are regarded as up to the standard. And finally, I will want to make sure that no Nigerian child will be prevented from having a university education for lack of means. These are some of the things that we are already pursuing, and these are means that are uh, issues that I will pursue more vigorously. And university, I don't want to approve the appointment 
of a university vice chancellor. What for? I don't even know them. You do it and you send me three names and you say, approve one. I don't know them. After I have approved, six months later, you say there is a riot in the university. Okay, suspend him. Now I don't know him. Then you ask me to suspend. After three months when I have suspended, you ask me again to reinstate him. Now, leave that to the university, university council. That is the type of autonomy that I want the university to have. And they should have it. They should be able to hire and fire. Now, why should the fact that the University of Maiduguri or the uh, lecturers in the University of Maiduguri or the administrative staff in the University of Maiduguri have problems with the council of the University of Maiduguri? Why should that affect all the 61 universities in the country? Why? Why should that? But if University of Maiduguri has problems, the academic staff or the administrative staff, they should take it up with the council of the University of Maiduguri. These are some of the things that I am uh, I, I addressing my, uh, my mind to, and I will address my mind more vigorously today. But uh, you will also note that before we came in, a university, a university professor was making 11,000. Nara. Today is making 150,000 Nara a month. I am satisfied with that. And I believe that they deserve it. But if they get that, they must show something for it. And I will make them show something for it. Where does this, where does this place the ASU problem in this scheme of things? I thought you would be asking ASU that. Spoke about university education generally, university education generally. Well, well, I don't see ASU as a trade union. I don't. <clears throat> do you have a word for them tonight? Pardon? What do you have a word for them tonight? Oh, the word I have. Or would you would you pursue this same policy when the you are The word I have for them tonight is that uh, uh, they have never had it better. In the last three years, ASU had had the best that this country can offer them. And therefore, they should reconsider their position. And to take the respons their responsibility, really, as responsible leaders in this society. Uh, to the, uh, the press and indeed the broadcast media will be happy to note that in kicking off your campaign, you, you went to them to, to unfold your plans, uh, especially coming against the backdrop of the supposed dislike for, for the media uh, in the past four, uh, before you came into office. Um, if you're re-elected, would, how would you strengthen, or would you, let me put it this way, would you strengthen the role of the media because of the uh, critical, its critical element in the, uh, as a way of sustaining democracy all over the world? Well, you say supposed. Well, since you say supposed, you yourself don't believe it. So it's supposed. But how did this supposed start? And I said it before. I had a farm. And um, I have put at the gate of my farm arm robbers, dogs are not wanted on this farm. And after I put that, I put slash and press men. So when it's a joke, when the press saw it, they say, ah, I categorize them with arm robbers and dogs. Oh, I said, you can see that it's an afterthought. I just don't want anybody to come and molest me here. Um, it was there for quite some time. They took the photograph of it and uh, they see. Um, some of my best friends are media men. Not that we always agree. Of course, if we always agree, then I will not be a man of my own mind and they will not be men of their own minds. 
And I believe that there is really enough in our constitution to protect uh, uh, what needs to be protected. That is freedom of expression, freedom of uh, speech. But I don't think that it should be uh, done. The press should realize that they have a very critical role to play in a society like our own that is still young and whose fabric is still very, very tender. Somebody was telling me, somebody who is always very, very uh, strong when the issue of the press was being uh, talked about. And I said, why are you so strong and bitter? He said, after leaving the government of Shagari in 1984, the highest, highest denomination of uh, currency then was 20 naira. The rumor had it, and it, and it was carried in the press, that his wife was caught with 20 million naira at a police checkpoint in a lady's handbag. Now you imagine how much of 20 naira note can you carry in a lady's handbag? Even in a lady's handbag, uh, in uh, Ghana must go. I don't, it must be a really big Ghana must go for you to put 2 million naira of 20 naira denomination. Now, <clears throat> you can imagine how destructive that can be on the family. So this is the sort of thing that one worries about. Or should it not concern you as a member of the media, concern you as a Nigerian, that some people may feel obliged to take brown envelope for Reporting, I, that will concern, that, 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 I will feel concerned and I will feel worried. So let us take these things for what they should be and for what they are. Now I don't. I, I, why should I hate press? Press are necessary, particularly for a democracy. As I have always said, unless it's seen and heard, then it's never happened. So that's why press are necessary. You have to. I, I say, well, now you don't talk of democracy, you must talk of autocracy, you must talk of mediocracy. They are all part of the crises that we have to deal with now. May I presume then that the, the sign on the farm gate, on your farm gate, has been removed? It even disappeared before I went to prison. May we have your closing maybe, remarks? Maybe I will think of something more uh, imaginative when I get... Not the press this time. I may not be press this time, maybe something, somebody else. I may be more specific, like saying, Ray Epu is not invited to <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Chief Obasanjo, may we have your closing remarks? You have a rare privilege now. You're the only candidate. Tell Nigerians why they should re-elect you. Oliver again, and any other thing you want to add? Well, I want to thank you. Moderator, and I want to thank you, the panel. I want to thank uh, uh, the audience here um, uh, uh, for bearing with me for the past oh, one hour, almost one and a half hours. Uh, I must say that uh, it's a pity that uh, my worthy uh, competitor will not make it because this will have been a very lively uh, uh, debate. Uh, for us to be able to uh, banter and throw uh, it uh, among us. Uh, after all, the Nigerians and democracy will have been uh, better for it. Uh, all the same, um, I, I still wish uh, my uh, competitor well. 
And I wish every Nigerian well. Um, it is our responsibility to make success of democracy. And this type of thing has never happened before. To me, this is an indication that democracy is alive and kicking. And it is our responsibility to continue to keep it alive and make it work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming. And thank you, the audience. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, many thanks go to everyone. I don't have the time to mention all the names now. They are on the screen. Thank you so much. Join us again next time. Bye-bye.